as we oh, go racing. So the green flag flies, and the final event on the 2009 Firestone Indy Lights calendar is underway, Ari, as we watch some dicing in the back. And here comes J.R. Hildebrand. Hildebrand, great start. Wagner, also a good start. Pippa, a very poor start. Look at James Davison, though. Very, very early on the gas and actually controlled the start, but Wade now making a push on the outside. Wade Cunningham will go to the outside. Of course, keep in mind, this driver has posted wins in four different Firestone Indy Light seasons. He has won races in, uh, in 2005, 2006, 2007, and 2009. Would like to end here, as you said, Ari, on a high note on board as we go side by side through two. Yeah, we all thought in the beginning of the season, Wade Cunningham and that Lucas Oil car would be a contender for the championship, but it really hasn't panned out that way. He has had very strong finishes on the ovals, and he hasn't had much luck here in Miami, but today it looks like it may be a good day to get a good result. Well, James Davison had a great race at Chicagoland as he finished second to the Brian Herta Autosports driver, Daniel Harrington. Now we go three wide to turn number one, and boy, we still see Davison stuck to the inside, but look on the outside, on the high side, the 26 of J.R. Hildebrand trying to make the move. Yeah, and I talked to J.R. Uh, before the race, and he just, he's like, I don't know what, what we're missing here, but looks, looks like his car is pretty freaking good in the race. Yeah, well, look at the five of Mario Romancini. We remember what he did at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Some high-speed dicing. Right now, Mario Romancini in that RLR Anderson racing car. He looks like he is going to go three wide to the high side. Very racy on the top there. It's very difficult to get that pass done. Obviously, you take more distance up there, but you have to have a car that's very well balanced and that control. Look at the dice wow. here. Three wide in the back. You know, Mario Romancini started 10th, Ari. He just needed just four laps to improve seven spots already from where he started on the grid. Yeah, excellent start. And I think that poor start by Pippa Mann really opened the door for a lot of people as we see him look to the top side again. Wade Cunningham there in the middle and Davison on the bottom, three wide. And let's not forget that Brandon Wagner, uh, who was on pole at Chicagoland, Ari's doing a good job keeping his foot in it. He's right there behind the leaders running on the low side. Yeah, he's doing a very good job. We all set oh, Chicago. Four wide wow. momentarily. That's, a, that's extremely close there. Look at the, the draft that Wagner's getting. He's trying to keep that car in the bottom. Oh, he's oh, spun. He's and, spinning. And it looks like he's going to save it. Oh, will he? No. Oh, he shot up the track. Let's see if everyone can avoid him. Everyone will miss him, but Brandon Wagner we were just giving him high marks oh, that's a shame. for keeping his foot in it. This is the number 32 Kingdom Racing Davey Hamilton Motorsports Machine. And there you see Brandon Wagner, and he's not happy with himself, Ari. It looked like he had a good line, but just pinched it a little bit down low. Yeah, and I was kind of commentating on that. It's wow. difficult to keep the car on the bottom with all those cars in front of Here's you. Here's a replay, Ari. We're on board with uh, James Davis and the Vision Racing Machine heading into turn number four. See, he slides up a little bit. And wow. then he gets the air taken off. I mean, it's he just had a little bit too much input there. It could have been one of those situations where the car had some understeer and he kept turning the wheel and then it snaps on him. Really, really fortunate Whoa. that no one hit Very him here coming up the track. Everyone has a really good restart here. They look pretty single file. Let's look in the back there. Logan Gomez is getting under pressure from Martin Plowman, wow, they nearly touched going into turn one. Yeah, and you uh, you see on the outside, uh, that's the Daniel Harrington blue car of uh, Brian Herta Autosport, as that car will try to make the move. And uh, here once again, out in front, the battle for the lead. Wayne oh, wow. Cunningham, it looks like he's going to have what he needs to make the outside pass going into three. He cleared him, but he didn't go low to protect the bottom, and Davison's now sneaking a peek. I don't think James is. Well, I don't know. Here he yeah, comes again see? on the inside. It looks like Davidson. They nearly touch as they once again go side by side. And they were talking about the sun. It's very difficult going into one. Drove the two-seater at this time yesterday, and it is nearly blind turning into turn one. On board with James Davison looking from the rear of the People's Republic car, now, People's Liberation car. And Ari, was that a fundamental mistake? that was made there by the 11 car by Wade Cunningham not coming down on him after he completed the pass? I mean, if he has the car to do it, that's definitely textbook. I mean, as soon as you clear the car, you want to come down and protect the bottom in this series. But if, if your car is working better on the top, that's where you have to stay. So it's pretty much dependent on the type of car and the setup you have. On board with your 2009 Firestone Indy Lights champion. Here is J.R. Hildebrand as he watched the battle in front. Ari, we've already seen him go three wide a couple of times here today. And see what he's doing? He wants to get around Davison. He wants to try to help Saavedra in this championship. So if Wade moves to the top, JR is going to go with him. He's going to want to push Wade past Davison. 
This is the battle up front. James Davison, our pole sitter, trying to hold off the series champion, J.R. Hildebrand, and now Roman Cini taking your advice, giving Hildebrand the push. See how he tucked in right behind there? Didn't go through. Oh, wide. boy. They, oh, oh, they almost loose. get hooked up again. James got really loose there, mid-corner. Wow, look how close Roman Cini was to the outside wall. And Mario Roman Cini makes the pass on the 21 car, and he will go to second. So James Davison goes from first to third. There's Lauren George. She's the owner of James Davison's machine. You said he got loose. Problem is, is something going wrong with that car? Is it going away from it? Well, he got loose big mid corner. I don't know what exactly happened, but now Saavedra smells blood in the water and he needs to pounce on this opportunity. Here's the replay on board J.R. Hildebrand's car. Here's the pass. Look at his hands right here. Very close. Oh, oh he got loose. See oh. how loose he got right there? Oh, man. That was so close. And then he got a huge understeer when he lost the air off the front wings. So that was a big moment for James Davison. So now it's Hildebrand and Roman Cini, and now suddenly the battle for second in the championship becomes very, very different because James Davison being stalked by Sebastian Saavedra. And Davison is very difficult to, to get around, I can tell you from experience. He's very good at these mile and a half ovals, and he knows exactly what he needs to do to keep another car behind him, but you, you really need to time it. And right now, you need to go with the momentum. They're losing the draft here a little bit, but if Saavedra can get around the outside where his car is working better, I think he might be able to give him a run. We're working the 41st of the 67 he's laps in Jamaica, and he's got him. He's pulled alongside, and he's got the inside line. Sebastian Saavedra looking to make the pass on James Davison, and he'll get it done in turn one. Following Gustavo Yakuman, remember he had the incident at Infineon wow. where the car got airborne. And Ari, he, he didn't spin it until right there, and yep, going to make the contact with the rear wing. I can't really say what happened there, uh, Mike. I mean, it was, it was kind of strange because it was very late in the corner. As the green flag will fly once again, 60 of 67 laps will be shown complete. J.R. Hildebrand, now here comes his teammate. Savedra on the bottom, let's see if it sticks. Usually after a restart, you have a little bit more front grip, so let's see if he can take advantage of that. J.R. cannot shake Mario Romancini, the Brazilian, bearing down on him. Here comes the Colombian on the inside, the American out in front. Boy, a, a great, it has been a great battle from the drop of the green flag. And if you saw J.R. Hildebrand right there, he didn't go all the way to the bottom. So he gave Saavedra enough room on the bottom to have air on his front wings. And what he's doing by that, he's giving Saavedra an opportunity to get below Romancini. But it looks like Saavedra just has too much understeer. Kevin Lee, uh, James Davison can't lose a position. But it looks like at this point, uh, Saavedra's got to gain a position if he's going to wind up second in the championship. He does. He needs to get second position. If it finishes the way it is right now, with Saavedra third, Davison in fifth, they would tie in the championship. But remember, that's before we came to the weekend. Davis got that bonus point for winning the poll, so Davis would still, Davison would still get second in the championship. Boy, how about, and how important are those bonus points? They just become bigger and bigger every year as the racing and the championships become closer. Roman Cini still working on the outside of that rear tire there on the right side of Hildebrand's car as he will come to the line five to go in the Firestone Indy Light season and Roman Cini Ari does he have anything out for him in these final five I definitely think he look does. at Podikin, oh, Podikin, Podikin making a move. yeah Podikin's going to go side by side for third place if he holds him down he's got it done so we've got two battles the, for the lead and for third as James Davison watches and it looks like Podikin will no he won't won't be able not to get that there lap. not that lap but he is very quick now he's dropped back a little bit so Wow, Davison's like, get him, get him, come on, come on. You know, that would just solidify his position in the championship. But Romancini, back to Romancini, I really think he does have a shot at this. I think he's biding his time right now. He's, he's basically sizing up Hildebrand right now. He might drop back a little bit to get a run. That would be the wise thing to do because he has the room. There will be two laps remaining at the line. We're two and a half laps away from throwing the checkers on the final race on the 2009 Firestone Indy Light schedule. Mario Romancini, can he win again? He pops to the outside, coming down the front straight as they will go two to go side by side into turn number one. Uh, side by side here, this is the push. Did this he go too early? I think he did, yes, I think he did in my opinion, but if he can get it done, if he can cross the finish line here, look at Hildebrand, push him up the track. Oh, 
So Roman Sini trying to edge in front as the South Florida sun begins to set. Oh, he's fading. Hildebrand still has that preferred line on the inside. Roman Sini, I think he went a lap too early. I think he went a little too early and he timed it just a little White bit too flag. late. White flag, final lap. Here comes Roman Sini. This is, this is going to be it. His final final attempt to get around J.R. Hildebrand. He needs to lag back right here and make the move coming into three. Off of turn number two, down the back straight for the final time to the outside as he looks over at J.R. Hildebrand. I think he knows at this point, Ari, he doesn't have look enough. Look at Savager. Look at Savager. Let's see if he can get it. Oh, oh, too much understeer again. He had to lift. Off of turn number four, they'll race side by side to the line. Roman Cini, it's a dead heat. And let's wait and see. It's Roman, Roman Cini. Cini, the winner. Mario Roman Cini off of turn number four. We thought he had gone early. He timed it instead, Ari, just right. Right. Wow, and and everyone shocked. JR's Tammy mom Peterson. can't believe it. Oh, that's Tammy Peterson, but she is oh. shocked. Roman Cini just pulled it off six ten thousandths of a second. Six thousandths. Six, six thousandths. thousandths is the difference. Roman Cini went to the high side as he exited turn four. All right, here it is, and here is the finish. Inches separating J.R. Hildebrand and Mario Roman Cini at the line.